So, you know, yesterday we were talking about who should get the job at uh, Health and Human Services, you know, the secretary for that uh, post, uh, or uh, who should get the health star. Those are two different jobs. And I said at least one of them should go to Howard Dean. He's a doctor. He's already handled health care in Vermont. He's already shown that he has can bring real change to an institution like he did at the DNC and shown a tremendous success at DNC as governor of Vermont, et cetera, et cetera. It's an overwhelming case to be made for, right? And uh, today we had a senator join on board for that, uh, Tom Harkin from Iowa, one of the most progressive senators. In fact, he was being considered apparently for one of those jobs. He said, no, you know what, I think Howard Dean should get it, and I think he's eminently qualified, et cetera. And I loved Harkin for saying that. Bless his heart for, you know, stepping up and, and telling it like it is, even if it's not to his political uh, benefit, standing up for Howard Dean, and he stood up for him in 2004, too back when uh, Dean was running for president. So that's good. That's great, in fact. I'm happy to see that. Although, again, I've seen two different lists now that did not include Howard Dean as a possibility, which drives me nuts. But, the, but that's not what set me off here, and that's not why it's at the top of the show. What set me off is towards the bottom of a piece actually written on Huffington Post, um, they talk about conventional wisdom in Washington and at the White House. And... The conventional wisdom is, well, it's very important that it not appear that the progressive community is backing Howard Dean. Because if it appears that way, then he won't be selected. And I was like, okay, all right. Let me try to understand why the hell that would begin to make sense since the president is theoretically progressive. So why wouldn't progressives being in favor of Howard Dean help him? Because, as we are told, it would appear that he's being pressured and that he cannot give in to that kind of political pressure. Wait a minute. He gives in to political pressure. Democrats make a living out of giving in to political pressure from the right. And no one ever writes a damn thing about that. Conventional wisdom says, oh, no, the president cannot be seen as caving in to the Republicans. No, they say, oh, he has to be bipartisan. He has to be. He has to listen to what the Republicans say. But if he ever dares to listen to what progressives say, oh, yeah. See, he caved into the progressive uh, political infrastructure, and look at these. Yeah, <laughs> turns out he's a progressive. Well, isn't that why we elected him? <laughs> I thought that's what we were campaigning for. I mean, this is madness, man. So what are we supposed to do? Like, as people who care about this country, who cared about getting Obama elected in the first place, and got Obama elected in the first place, not just us, of course, but all of us who cared about real change in America, and a progressive platform because the conservative platform was not working. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to shut up? We need to be quiet because God forbid you should say something that makes sense because if you do, then it'll have to be ignored. I thought we were going to get a new Washington. That's the old Washington, man, where if a progressive or a liberal ever says something, it's instantly devalued and mocked and marginalized and, ha ha, no way, yeah, you liberals thought we shouldn't invade Iraq. <laughs> right? I thought we had a new Washington. Apparently not. No, if a progressive has an idea, t caca. No, don't touch it. It's uh, so stupid and so outrageous. Man, it got me worked up today. J.R. Jackson. Well, it's, uh, I think it's what we've kind of said before. We're so afraid of, of coming up with the fake truth that many conservatives have come up with saying, well, if he listens to these radicals, that are in that are on the left part of the country then this is crazy he's, he's going so far radical we can't do it so in hopes of trying to not get them to say see see they try not to do it from the beginning before before it's even done they're afraid of what the end result because they've said it so many times in the past no but the thing is yeah you're 188 percent right okay that's exactly it but why do you give a damn what they say Someone who's strong doesn't give a damn what they oh what is the opposition gonna say they're gonna say look here, here I'll give I'll quote the piece uh, as one Democrat in Washington put it, he doesn't want to appear to be, quote, bending to the demands of the left. Oh, God forbid. God forbid that you should actually care who, what your voters put you in office to do. Oh, no, that would be bending to the demands of the left. Have they ever written a piece about bending to the demands of the right? No, not once. Not once. Mainstream media? Never. Never. Okay? All right, now, here's a uh, second uh, choice of words that I found in interesting amusing and maddening uh, that if they if he does anything progressive or listens to any progressives that would be quote 
political pacification. So what are we supposed to do? I honestly, what should we pack up the show? Because God forbid we should accidentally support the right guy, in which case he won't get selected. Or should we do the opposite? I demand you put Rush Limbaugh on Health and Human Services. If you don't want to pacify me, make sure you put in Howard Dean, because I don't like that guy. I want Rush Limbaugh. I mean, what the... What do we have to do here? It's... God damn, man. I thought we had a new country. Of course not. Of course not. Now, listening to anybody that makes sense would be bending the demands of the left. 